I'm not going to comment on what happened in Syria yesterday. Uh, I'll let the Israeli government uh, confirm or deny whatever strikes that they've taken. What I have said in the past, and uh, I continue to believe this, is that the Israelis justifiably uh, have to guard against the transfer of advanced weaponry to terrorist organizations like Hezbollah. And uh, you know, we coordinate closely with the Israelis, recognizing that uh, you know, they are very close to Syria. They're very close to Lebanon. And that was President Obama speaking yesterday on one of the political chat shows. Lots of discussion on those chat shows about Israel's airstrike on Syria. Why were they doing it? Well, I think uh, our foreign affairs minister, John Baird, summed it up pretty well on CTV's question period. Well, I can't confirm what's, uh, what's happened, but obviously uh, it's in all of our interest that Hezbollah doesn't get uh, control of, uh, of heavy weapons. They're an international terrorist organization who've targeted uh, women and children and civilian populations and have uh, threatened to uh, en masse to come in support of uh, Assad uh, and his war against the Syrian people. All right, joining me now for further discussion of what's going on with Israel, with Syria, and the entire region, Michael Korn. He is host of the Arena. And Michael, uh, you know, kudos to both President Obama. I don't say that often, but kudos to President Obama yeah. on this one. And to John Baird, both gentlemen saying, no, Israel was in the right here, despite the brain that's coming from uh, those who want us to be an honest broker. Well, John Baird, I'm not surprised at all, of course. I mean, he's been consistent on this. But I, I, I was rather surprised by President Barack Obama, who didn't trim. He didn't compromise. He, he made it quite clear where he stands. But this wasn't Israel attacking Syria. This was Israel defending itself against the, 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 the potential of Hezbollah. This was a, a very specific attack on Syria's Republican Guard, the, the fourth division of their military, which has committed atrocities, most loyal, most highly trained. And the weapons coming in from Iran are, are, are going to be supplied directly to these units and to Hezbollah. And it's no good Israel hanging around and saying, well, you know, w when you get them and when they're on our border, then we'll deal with it. No, that's too late because they'll be buried very deep and Israel will be attacked. So they've taken a preemptive strike. Do you remember Hezbollah not only attacked Israel, but attacked uh, Argentinian Jews in Buenos Aires who had nothing to do with the situation uh, it's been involved in all sorts of international terror. So there's no surprise here. And there's no surprise at the complete hypocrisy of so many Arab governments that they're calling every day for, for the Assad regime to be destroyed. But they're now simultaneously condemning Israel for helping to destroy the Assad regime. Well, I want to take this back to comments last week when it was announced that by John Baird that Canada would not seek its, uh, a seat at the UN Security Council. Mm. And you had Paul Dewar uh, a man who I just think should know better, who I think does know better, but wants to parrot the right party line, the right progressive line, kept talking about, well, Canada needs to be an honest broker for Mideast peace. And my point was, well, what's the honest broker position between Israel and Hamas, which wants to destroy Israel and kill all the Jews? That's Hamas's opening position. And then on the, their northern side, they've got Hezbollah, which is bringing in these uh, rockets, these other military, uh, this other military gear from Syria supplied by Iran so they can rain, um, you know, hellfire down upon Israel. What is the honest broker position between those? Paul Dewar wouldn't come on and explain it. Maybe you can. Well, I, look, I you obviously have a higher opinion of this fellow than I do. I think he has no experience in foreign affairs at all. I'm not sure why he got this portfolio. You can be an honest broker between Israel and Morocco, Israel and the Gulf states, Israel and Jordan, because these countries have a certain uh, similar regard for civility and peace and justice, but not for, for a state which is a rogue state, which has no control of its military, which uh, commits acts of terrorism. No, you, you can't be in the middle between the, the rape victim and the rapist. It's a ridiculous thing to say. But you, you've got to understand what, what's going on. We, we just saw the map just now. I mean, what it didn't show was just how big, for example, Saudi Arabia is, how much land it has, how controlled and how encircled Israel is as a country. It has to defend itself. It, you, you, they, they can't play Canada in this. They're not isolated. They don't have a huge border. They don't have an enormous land mass. It, it's, it's desperate. I have been to the, the borders with Lebanon and Syria, at, at, well, Jordan and Egypt, particularly the one with Syria, many times. Now, that's a safe border. It has been for years. You're not meant to go into no, no man's land. I've been there three or four times now because nothing's going to happen to you. It's been safe up to this point. Why? Because Assad is terrified of allowing any terrorists across the border. They've infiltrated in other areas, but he knows that if they do come across, Israel would hit back very hard indeed. Israel doesn't want to do that. It wants to go back and make things and be a healthy economy. 
But once you frighten your, your opponent enough, then you will achieve peace. This is uh, what the so-called pacifists never will understand. I, w I want to ask you uh, your thoughts on John Baird saying something else that, uh, that I hadn't heard him say before. Maybe he had said it. But we've been talking about this sort of thing uh, on byline, on the arena, that there is no good side to choose mm. in this Syrian war. Well, that's true. Be because of the, the influx of jihadi fighters uh, for what had been some thought, I never thought it would stay this way, but some said at the beginning that the, uh, the, the, the rebel movement was, was secular, it was uh, pan-Syrian, so it included the Christians, it included different sects of Islam. No, now it is becoming an Islamic jihadist group. John Baird was very blunt in saying that today and saying, uh, you know, it's difficult to go in and choose sides, and that's why he doesn't think that Canada should do it. Were you surprised that he was that forthright? He, he's extraordinarily knowledgeable of the region. I tweeted last night about this, and you should have seen these the idiots, the, the, the liberal idiots who were going, my, a son host dares to support Assad. No, what I said was, uh, Assad is no angel, but compared to what will replace him, it's very hard to choose sides. Say, look, if you know Syria, Assad is a man, he's a secularist. He, he's not even a religious on a personal basis. He wanted to be an eye doctor and live in London or maybe go back and practice in Syria. Toleration of Christians, suppression of Islamic fundamentalism, women have full equality. He hasn't wanted a war with Israel. He's, if it wasn't for Iran's power, I think he actually would have tried to achieve a peace treaty with Israel, tried to reach out to Turkey. It's become more Islamic. The man is not a good man. His father wasn't a good man, but... They are secular Ba'athist regimes. They don't believe in a caliphate. They don't believe in some uh, theocratic state. The people who will replace him, it will not be, you've seen this in every revolutionary struggle, it's the hardcore Bolshevik type people at the very center who know how to kill and to die for what they believe. They will dominate. The only advantage of having him replaced is the, the, the government in place of him will not be pro-Iranian. It will be Sunni, thus it will look more to Egypt and Saudi Arabia than it will to Iran. But I've got to tell you, and this happened with Saddam Hussein as well, when, when you have a devil you know, there is some sort of common ground. Replace that with something erratic, anarchic and fundamentally religious, all sorts of problems, the box is opened. All right, Michael, always good talking to you. But you always amaze me with your knowledge of the Middle East. Good chatting with you again, sir. Thank you. Email me your thoughts, byline at sunmedia.ca. More to come.